Hi everyone. It's an honor to present today a Progress and Feeds Migrate module. Um, my name is Irina Zatz. I came from San Francisco. I'm Drupal developer and open source evangelist. And uh, my name is Juri. I uh, work in SAIST as a backend developer that's in the Netherlands. And uh, I'm the Feeds module maintainer and I've worked on uh, feeds for the uh, past six years now. Uh, in this presentation today, we're going to cover, uh, we're going to go with overview of uh, content export and imp uh, content imports, and we'll compare feeds and migrate frameworks. We'll do the demo, and then hopefully we'll have enough time for questions and answers. Uh, we're using development tools, so be aware. Before we dive into specific content issues, I want to take a bird eye view on the uh, websites altogether and remember, put it into context so we remember why we're doing all these content migrations. So the function of the website is support organization. And because organization changed, websites also changed. And content is being generated inside organization and outside organization and you want it to be moved around quickly and efficiently. Let's look at what we're moving. We're moving structured data in various formats. It comes from different sources. It comes from files. It comes from other websites. Sometimes it comes from databases. We sometimes want to move all the content one time, which would be a migration, for example, from the previous website or we want to keep updating news or courses or some content that is, has periodic, periodic nature. Uh, we want to give instructions to our site what to do with things that we did previously, like do you keep previous, uh, previously imported items? Do you want to update them? Do you want to remove them? And we want to monitor and make sure that we know what actually happened. So. Today we're going to look at two large, very typical cases. One is migration from old site to the new site. It's more or less one time thing. You have very clearly developed structure and you just want to move things. We're not talking redesigns, we're talking just pure migrations or upgrade. Down the road when you're migrating, you want, might want to transform something. For example, Drupal 8 uses ISO data date uh, format, which has T in the middle, and Drupal 7 does not. So there are some transformation that might need to happen. And then the new system uh, follows the old uh, structure. We also have different type of cases where we have existing website. For example, uh, we work. Uh, I work at Stanford University. We have departmental websites and we like to integrate news or courses or some other content and we want to pull it from like central registrar or some other uh, or central news and we have one structure in, in our website and they have different structure so we have ongoing periodic imports where we need to remap structure so uh, things are getting into our fields right and of course it has to be done by Monday, which by the way was yesterday. And here's our tool set. In Drupal 8, uh, the huge news is that we have one click upgrade that <clears throat> is based on my grade module. Uh, everyone hoped for this one click upgrade for many years. And some people still say it's just one click at the end. You have to do a lot of clicks before. Uh, we have wonderful module that I love, which is called Feeds, where I can configure, uh, uh, I can configure export and then I can configure import and bring in data. And then we have very, very powerful migrate suite uh, that can work with database, with files. Uh, it is targeted towards developers. And we also have an option for custom scripts, which are wonderful and very quick, but they're not reusable. Today we're going to talk about two major import uh, uh, frameworks. How many people have used Migrate already? 
How many people use feeds? So I think that you more or less know what's going on uh, in general in both uh, modules. I'm going to quickly go over them and then we're going to talk about why it would be really great to have them working together. So Migrate, very powerful. Uh, it is for developers. It has very steep learning curve. It supports simple migrations and chain migrations. It has some UI, uh, I would call it some limited UI, where you can see it, after you run certain number of Drush commands, you can through UI see what was happening, what has been imported, and you have little limited capability of uh, rollback or re-import things. Uh, one of huge limitations is that uh, everything including data source is coded and so if you want to change uh, you can't change anything in migration and if through UI on productions you always have to do it in code you always need developer to change migration um, and that is a huge limitation uh, in cases when we have uh, content editors who want to change uh, something, uh, remap field, or change the source of migration. And this is where model feeds come in. Yeah. And yeah, I'm going to give you a brief look about the feeds module for those who don't know the module. It uh, aims to support uh, non-developers to import the content. And I'll show you the key features. Oh, wrong one. So its key features are, it provides a mapping UI, so you can map source fields to Drupal target fields. You, with feeds temper, you can modify or transform the data. And it supports various fo uh, file formats you can input from CSV, JSON or XML. You can input from various locations, like a URL a file upload or a server directory. It allows uh, periodic imports, so you can import, uh, run an import, say, every hour or every day. It's, it's, that's useful if uh, the, the source is not static and changes and you want to import the updates. And most importantly, it allows your editors to, do it, to provide source files and do imports. So, you don't need to consult the developer for that. So I'll tell you briefly about how feeds work. First you add the feed type. Then uh, you specify what type of data you want to create, like nodes or users. You map source to fields. You transform the data if it's needed. And, and then this part your editor could do is add a feed type, supply a data source, and run the import. So this is how the mapping UI looks like. O on the left side, uh, you uh, specify the, s the sources. The second column uh, shows uh, which Drupal target fields the sources are mapped to. And for some target fields, you have additional configuration. Like for the body field, you can configure which text format you want to input the data in because usually you don't want to specify that in the source file which, which text format something needs to mean. You want to have that pre-configured. So let me tell you now something about how feeds and migrates could work together in Drupal 8. So <clears throat> on the one side we just we have migrate that's very powerful but it lacks a good UI. And as you uh, see on the other side, we have feeds. This one does provide a UI, but it's a complete separate framework. So this means that um, contract modules that want to support both input frameworks, they now have to write and a migrate plugin and a feeds plugin. So that's <coughs> double work. So wouldn't it be great if the two systems could somehow be combined together? And that would be a win-win solution for everyone, because developers only have to maintain uh, <coughs> one import framework, 
as the side builders would gain the power of migrate because migrate can do a lot more than feeds can do and content management managers can import the data themselves without have, having to consult a developer so that's uh, um, that might, might um, cost less <laughs> so so let me tell you about the feeds migrate module this is an, a new module built on top of migrate and it tries to uh, mimic the feeds UI. Its features are that it's integrated with the migrate ecosystem, so, so it's top, built on top of migrate, as I said. It says UI tuned for site builders. Uh, it works with existing migrations, so if you had your developer uh, coded migrations before, with this module you can add them in, in the UI and works with other Drupal distributions as well. So, I'm going to show you a demo from how it's working today. So, we have a, a, a file here, an XML file. It has two items, and for the simplici simplicity of the demo, we only import the titles. And it's, there's our two articles we want to import. So first we add a migration group, we give it a name, it doesn't really matter what kind of name. Then we go to list migrations, we add a migration and this is where the feeds migrate UI comes in. You can give it a name, you select a group, you select uh, where you want to fetch the data from. In this case, we want from a URL. That's, we select how to parse the data. In this case, XML. We specify the root XPath, which I won't go into detail here now. And we specify what type of data to create. In this case, an article, a uh, note. Then we go to the migration. We go to mapping. We add a new mapper. And we want to map to node title, so we select title from the list. We specify XPath source, which also happens to be title. And because we don't want to import duplicates, we check that it's a unique field. And then we go to Feeds Migrate, and this is what your editor allows you to, would be able to do. We select our migration. And this UI is going is subject of change, but now it works like this. We uh, specify the URL to import from. We check to make sure that it's import our articles. Hit save. And then the editor clicks on import. And it should import two articles. Two articles are successfully created. Let's see them in the content list. Yes, there they are. There's the article Lorem Ipsum and the article Feeds Migrate is Ailsum. So uh, back to the presentation. So let me show you what we just saw. The, what currently is working for uh, Feeds Migrate. That's uh, adding a migration and the mapping UI and performing an import. And documentation is a work in progress. And we're currently busy with creating the UI for configuring process plugins. That's, uh, process plugins are the uh, equivalent of Feeds Tamper for those. <coughs> who know feeds tamper but don't know process begins. So, I give the word back to Irina. Yuri, thank you very, very much uh, for all the work and all the coding that you've done and everything. However, we still need some help. Um, 
I want to thank first all the developers that already contributed and get it from the up from the ground, this new module. We have architecture in place. We have very clearly defined issues that uh, describe things that can be actually done in two hours, six hours of your time. And we have regular meetings on Thursdays. So today, uh, around eight, uh, six o'clock locally, we will have another meetup for those who are on other continents or East Coast. If they want to get on Slack, we're going to tell them we have seven more people to join the Slack. Uh, please check it out if you're interested in helping. Uh, we have a wish list of things that are not started yet. If you have expertise in this particular area and um, are using feeds or need it for your projects, um, please join us and make this uh, module more usable. And we have a couple of related core issues where we need help. Um, again, this is a place where we are talking to all Drupalers, open source contributors, uh, please um, uh, try the module. We're talking to all the users of the module. Please try it, use it, say this is what we need, this is what's working. You don't always have to contribute by coding. You can also contribute by testing, by submitting, uh, by submitting your what doesn't work for you, bugs, and just simply spreading the word around so people can uh, start using this thing. I want to say thank you to all the avant-garde developers that worked on it during last year and a half. And now we have some time for questions and answers before we have a next presentation. So we will, uh, who does have questions? Um, Go ahead. Can you move the microphone? Uh, he, uh, I, I don't know, whatever. No, this microphone is, has a cable. Uh, if nobody has questions, maybe I can ask a few questions. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know if this is working. Oh, here's, okay. here's a question. Oh, yeah. sorry. All right, but maybe you're next. The microphone then. <laughs> <coughs> um, maybe just let this I've been trying uh, to use the commerce feeds module and trying to import products, but uh, the products are uh, having some uh, multilingual fields. How can you handle that in feeds? I'm, I'm still working on the multilingual support in, in the regular feeds module. And for feeds migrate, I haven't really looked at how that would work. Because now I'm overwriting the fields. You're now overwriting the fields, yeah. Yeah, there, there, is, an, there is an issue for uh, language support in in uh, feeds uh, eight dot x three. So just, that's not feeds migrate, but uh, yeah, I still need to dive into that. And I'm too busy with uh, feeds migrate and other feeds issues, so it's. Uh, it's too too much for me to handle all, all at once. So, but in, it's it's uh, planned. So go ahead, Niels. Uh, so this feeds migrate module replaces the other feeds module, and will there be a moment uh, when the other one then the the current feeds module then becomes deprecated, or what is the schedule or idea by for this? Well, if feeds migrate succeeds, then the, it will re eventually it replaces the old uh, feeds module. But at the moment, uh, all my clients are on, on the regular feeds, so as long as they are on that, feeds uh, remain supported. And I think uh, I will support it even longer. I think the only the only thing I would add to that is uh, that uh, you at one point when you do that that you move stuff over to the feeds because there's a brand in in feeds uh, that it's way easier to for for people that know it than to have to cross that so we are now in feeds we there's no there's no way ahead uh, and they don't know that feeds migrates exist uh, maybe. 
Um, can, can you may say, may, maybe say that at the microphone? Yeah. And the people at home can hear it too. So, so the idea is that when feeds migrate uh, is ready, <coughs> maybe what you can do is that you make a feeds uh, 4.0. Uh, we create a migration path from 3.0 to 4.0. Somebody. <laughs> So migrate, migrate. <laughs> you have experience. <laughs> um, and, uh, and that we basically, that then uh, you get all the benefits of feeds migrate uh, within regular feeds, which is a, a very popular module coming all the way from Drupal 5 at least, perhaps even before. Yeah, and I've worked on feeds since 2013 and uh, I believe the first one was released in 2009 or something, yeah. or so I'm not sure. Probably Drupal 5 at the time, so <laughs> 6. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea to just call it Feeds uh, version 4. <coughs> but right now it's, uh, we keep it separate for, um, yeah, it's to, sep to it's have focus in the issue queue. So you, you need your own sandbox in <laughs> that one makes sense. Yes. So the reason why the the reason why we started new module uh, was to keep it separate from existing working uh, version of feeds out of the box feeds right now support CSV. If you want to extend it to XML or JSON or other formats, you need uh, parsers. Feeds extensible parsers. Feeds extendable parsers. Okay. So when we started feeds migrate, uh, we wanted to make sure that we have very clear indication that this works that it feeds UI on top of migrate, but the hope is that it was very important for me to present branding for feeds because site builders, if you tell them migrate, they're like, I'm not doing it, just no. Uh, if you say feeds, half of developers said, nah, nah, feeds, no. So the idea that things can work together in Drupal uh, is very appealing <laughs> to my heart. So um, I think that plan was to have feed, feeds migrate be the, like a feeds for everything but right now it doesn't because csv is not in core and xml and json are in core these are some of the issues that needs to be resolved and i think it's going to be closer to drupal 9 when it all becomes one one feeds module that's yeah so what what rena said and uh, there is no csv parser in Drupal core for migrate, only um, migrate plus. and oh yeah, migrate plus. plus, migrate plus, sorry, <coughs> and migrate plus only supports XML and JSON at the moment. So CSV is not supported yet, I think, by feeds migrate. I haven't tried it myself actually, yes, though. so maybe it works. There is a CSV source somewhere. <laughs> uh, so there is additional module that allows you to. Uh, so the, there is migrate uh, uh, migrate source CSV that allows you to uh, in, uh, to import CSV sources. There's one more module entity <coughs> entity import or something. So people are working a lot. Uh, working and trying to make things a little bit easier uh, for site builders. So <coughs> migrate has UI because it has very strong core, but the, the visual part is a little. Undeveloped, but the the discussion with Lucas Heading was that uh, both JSON and XML are supported in core itself, and CSV format. That's at least my understanding. It's not the the parsers don't support it as well. So this is why we said, okay, let's deal with XML and JSON in feeds right now in feeds migrate right now and live feeds with CSV out of the box as is. That. Okay. So uh, are there any more questions? <laughs> Can you, will you uh, go to the microphone, please? What was the end goal with uh, feeds migrate? Do you want to have uh, feeds built on top of migrate API? Or you want to have a UI for the Migrate API? Um, we, um, because Migrate is uh, so big, we first aim for a feeds like UI built on top of Migrate. So in the, in the beginning, it would only uh, support the basic use cases. And 
and we see where we go, can go from there. There's not, I have not planned that yet. It's first focus on getting it to work. You think? So there might be a chance that in the future we'll have something more than just a feeds. Yeah, yeah, I hope it can go to that. <laughs> so, are, are there any more questions? ECK entities in 7, are they now migrated to 8? Because ECK when I tried it at first, it didn't work. I, uh, the ECK is a different module than FITS, I think, but there is a, there is a migrate pass and I can talk to you all yeah, about okay. it as well. <laughs> but it's there. Thanks. So are there any more questions? Okay, then we can finish. Great. Um, thank you everyone for coming and we are ready for the next presenter.